Hey guys, how's it going? Chez back again with another episode of the AC Milan career mode here on Xbox One. We're into episode number 27 and after yesterday's marquee signing in the transfer window, we're rounding out pre-season today with this final friendly against Manchester City at home at the San Siro. Now unfortunately, or kind of fortunately, we have a game against uh, Juventus coming up quite shortly after this one against C. So I played a very much rotation and a very much a weaker side than I ordinarily would have against City. But to be fair, they were playing quite a weak side as well. So it wasn't the most entertaining of games. As such, there isn't that many highlights from it. But uh, we'll be jumping into the second game in the not too distant future. But Giovanni Dos Santos trying to, uh, to make the breakthrough there. But there really wasn't that much space. And City are a very much physical side. And uh, it wasn't quite... As, uh, as easy a game as perhaps it could have been with uh, with the first team that uh, had I put a first team out and or had I put a more physical side out. I was playing the players such as Lacazette, Giovanni Dos Santos and uh, Adam Yates etc. Not the tallest or strongest players that uh, we necessarily have in the squad but we unfortunately lost that game but it wasn't too much of a, of a worry to be completely honest. The the main thing that I was concerned about was making sure my first team were fit for the Super Copa final and of course it's the uh, the winners of the, or it's kind of the, the equivalent of the Community Shield in, uh, in England. It's the winners of the FA Cup slash Copa Nationale against the winners of the Premier League slash Serie A and of course Juventus won both the Serie A and the Coppa Nazionale and we were runners up in both Serie A and the Coppa Nazionale so we undoubtedly or unsurprisingly are the team that are playing Juventus in the Supercoppa so uh, it's actually played at the Juventus Stadium now I think that's just not a glitch but that was just how the uh, how the arrangement of the fixture had been made prior to the fact that Either Juventus won the league or we won the league, etc. So uh, it's just, you know, like the uh, the Champions League final when Chelsea played Bayern, that so happened to be at the Bayern Munich stadium. It's that kind of scenario where, you know, the the, the host stadium had already been determined prior to the, uh, the teams actually figuring out who was going to be playing in the tie. But Juventus are a side that we definitely haven't done that well against so far in uh, in our AC Milan career mode experience. They, of course, have beaten us in the league. They beat us in the Coppa Nazionale final last year, 2-0, quite convincingly. And uh, they're easily the strongest side that we've had to play against so far in this career mode, without any shadow of doubt. They're so, so strong all the way through the side. And they play a 3-5-2 formation, which really messes with the way that I like to play football. My... Uh, my football, my ethos when I play FIFA is very much a possession-based game and they flood the midfield against me and it absolutely throws me out and I can't control the game like I like to do considering they uh, they just have so many bodies in the way and there's such high pressure in the middle of the park that I can't play the sort of football that I like to, which is why I've struggled against Juventus up to now. But uh, in this one, we were still kind of trying to figure out how to, uh, to go about facing Juventus and uh, unfortunately, uh, in the first half, we weren't quite able to uh, to get ourselves in front. Although Honda went very, very close there with uh, with the shot coming back off the inside of the post. Salvatore Sirigu absolutely beaten. And uh, unfortunately, it just came back off the woodwork and we weren't able to take the lead. Montalivo threw himself at it as uh, as it bounced out. But unfortunately, he gave away a foul and they got a free kick. So I made a couple of changes around about that hour mark as we headed into the second half. Pedro and Kevin Constant coming on for Matai Decilio and Stefan El Sarawi. Now, Pedro is, of course, the market key signing that we made yesterday so if you missed that video by the way feel free to check the channel page etc there will be a link as an annotation in the bottom left hand side of your screen but you'll notice from what's just happened on the screen that is the third time Fernando Llorente has had an absolutely guilt edged chance to take the lead for Juventus in this game and he failed to take it yet again he'd been really disappointing for them he was they were creating the chances but he just wasn't able to put them away and again we were creating chances but Salvatore Sirigu was the difference between us putting the ball into the back of the net rather than our strikers a la Fernando Llorente just putting the ball wide of the post. We're going to get another chance here. Polly finds Honda, who has a, a runner on the outside of him. It's Pedro. So it's great strength to shove the defender aside. And Pedro makes the difference. He's just come into the side, just come into the squad, and uh, just come onto the pitch as well. And uh, his first... His first act as a Juventus uh, as a Juventus player, as an AC Milan player in a competitive game, is to score the winner against our biggest rivals in the league, Juventus, to give us a win in the Supercoppa. That is our first trophy as AC Milan manager 
very, very pleased to have come away with a win from that. Not only because, you know, we have a trophy, but also because it was against a side that we previously struggled against. We proved that we can beat Juventus, which gives us the confidence to push forward into this second season and hopefully be just as successful, if not more successful, than we were in the opening season. And Ricardo Montalivo is the player that's going to be lifting the trophy. And of course, in yesterday's video, we accepted or put, a, put in a counteroffer for a bid for... Uh, Montalivo from Liverpool so lifting the Super Copper uh, trophy could be the final act that Ricardo Montalivo does as an AC Milan player kind of a la Didier Drogba being the uh, you know his final kick for Chelsea was to score the winning pen penalty in the Champions League that could be the final thing that uh, Montalivo does for us we're putting bids in for centre-backs of course though because we do need an extra defender and uh, we want a strong defender as well, which is kind of half the reason why I'm trying to move Montalivo 1 to free up some extra funds so we can bring in a good quality centre-back as opposed to just an average one. As you can see, we're counter-offing 11 million now. They are offered 9.5 to start off with. I uh, counter 12.5 and, and they came back with that 10. So we'll ask for 11. Hopefully they will accept it. Also trying to shift on Saponara and Brian Cristante as well. And rather than just throwing counter-offers backwards and forwards and risk losing a potential deal, I've just accepted the lesser offer of 1.7 when he's valued at 2 million from Palmer just to get him out of the club and free up the funds that we're going to need to bring in a, a marquee centre-back because that's what I want to do now. We were looking at players like uh, Kurt Zuma and uh, Umtiti because we only had around about uh, seven, seven or eight uh, million pounds to spend but if we can move on Montalivo that will free up a larger chunk of funds that we can bring in a much much better player you know in the background you're going to see me putting offers in for uh, for quite a few different centre backs as well to be completely honest and uh, in a couple of them I am going to try and use Vergara as a make weight previous or similarly to uh, how we have done previously with other players and other deals etc and Caceres was actually a player we looked at last year last January and uh, we decided to bring in Benucci over Caceres, but Caceres is still very much a legitimate option for us in this particular transfer window. Also putting a bid in for Mycon from Porto, and I mentioned in the sticker book, uh, World Cup sticker book uh, video from Sunday, I think, we were looking through the uh, looking through the book, seeing who we'd got. I pointed out on Marcos Rojo, saying we were going to look into him for uh, for future reference in the, um, in the career mode, which is exactly what we're doing now. And as you can see, Liverpool have accepted the offer of, or counter offer of £11 million pounds for Ricardo Montalivo, so he will be leaving the club. Lifting the Copa, or Super Copper uh, trophy was very much the last thing that he was going to do as an AC Milan player in an AC Milan shirt. So uh, we're looking for marquee signings, and Marquinhos definitely would be one of those marquee signings they want 17 and a half I'm not going to offer 17 and a half obviously so I went for eight and a half plus for Gara I'm not expecting them to accept that but hopefully by offering such a lower uh, price value then uh, they'll lower their expectations by quite a chunk as well we've moved on Abu Dhabi as well we bought him in for 2.8 we've sold him on for 3.9 he's had a season with us done very very well in a squad rotation role and we've made profit on him you can't really ask for more than that we have had a bid in from Torino for Vergara outright but of course if he's going to be used as a make weight in any future deal I can't accept a bid from someone else that's solely for that player because that would scupper any future deals up so uh, Montalivo has been confirmed as going we're going to take £8 million pounds from that £11 million pound transfer fee straight into our transfer budget and hopefully in the next episode as we lead up towards the transfer deadline day which will be in tomorrow's video we can find ourselves a replacement centre-back. So that's the plan for tomorrow. We're going to look and try and bring in a marquee centre-back signing. I'm not sure who it's going to be as of yet but hopefully we can bring someone in before that transfer deadline day on the 31st of August. As you can see we'll have the first game of the Serie A season against Livorno as well and also our next game of the Serie A season will be played in tomorrow's episode as well which is actually I think against Brescia one of the new teams that have come up from Serie Bay so that'll be quite interesting as well but that's going to bring this one to a close guys so thank you very much for watching I won't shove the end slate on uh, on screen now I'll just leave the uh, the fixer list up there for uh, for now so if you want to subscribe to the channel make sure you don't miss out on any content coming on this channel you've got this series there's going to be a my player video tonight of course it's Tuesday and there is the World Cup sticker book album uh, collection video slash series as well so feel free to subscribe there's a link in the description there's an annotation in the top right and of course the usual subscribe button and if you missed the previous episode from this series then there's a, an annotation on screen in the bottom left hand side of the picture of course as always feel free to check the channel page and there was a sticker book video go up yesterday with quite a few world class pulls in it as well so feel free to check that out if you missed it as well and if we could hit 100 likes on this video as well that would be absolutely superb so thank you very much for watching guys that's all for today for the AC Milan career mode my player later on tonight but for now, I will see you.